Welcome to Willow's World of DIY. I'm Willow, and today I'm going to show you guys how to replace the clutch on a 2000 Yamaha R6. Let's get to it. Alright, we're going to start off by removing our lower fairings. I have, this is my old race bike. So, uh, I have DeZeus quarter turn fasteners on it. So that makes it nice and easy to remove all the lowers. Okay, this is where our clutch plates are located. You'll see your, your uh, clutch lever going into it. When you pull the clutch, this cable moves back and forth. That means this side is the clutch. And it has the oil fill right there. Let's go ahead and start taking that apart. I'm just using a five millimeter Allen. Like I said before, this is my old race bike that I used to race. Um, it might not look like much from the outside, but I actually have quite a bit of work done to it. Um, I've pulled the motor completely out of this frame and powder coated this frame. Um, for those of you that see my other powder coating videos, that was quite a project. And I've replaced this clutch, uh, I don't know, I don't even know how many times, quite a few times. I don't know if it's ready for a replacement, but I got a request from one of my subscribers to do a clutch replacement. So we're going to go ahead and check it. If it needs to re be replaced, then I'll replace it. If it doesn't, then I'll just show you guys what you need to do to replace it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see my my uh, manufactured chain tensioner here that we did when I um, I've done we uh, we put a thinner head gasket on this engine we uh, flow binged and ported the heads we put race cams in it uh, it has an R and D race transmission that uh, all the dowels are undercut and hardened. So, this thing runs pretty good. I mean, probably not as good as the new bikes, you know, but still, for for being a 2000, almost 20 years old, it, uh, it runs pretty damn good. You know, pull the clutch in. And put a jam of screwdriver in there. That way you can oops, that way you can remove this cable. Now that the cable's removed, we can pull this plate off. We need a 10 millimeter. Yep. You can use the Phillips too. I just prefer to use, use 10 millimeter just so I don't strip out these bolts. So these are your clutch springs. They usually have a color on to know what tension they are. So you want to replace those whenever you replace the clutch. You want to look around this wear, mark, wear part to see if there's any uh, heat marks, any bluing, anything, you know, that's darker than the rest. Mine looks really good. If yours doesn't look good, you need to replace it. This is our first clutch plate. Another friction plate. It looks good to me. So I don't think I need to do a clutch job yet, but let's keep going and we'll see. You want to look through all the steel plates too and see any anywhere that you might see. You can see some on this. It's not too bad. Alright, we're just going to go ahead and pull the whole pack. Alright, so that's the entire clutch pack. 
you can pull it out all in one, you know, swipe if you want. But you want to go through all these and check for any heat marks, wear marks, any wear on your your uh, friction pads or your your friction plates. Usually on all these steels, you're gonna see some wear marks, and uh, you know if your clutch is burning out, you're definitely gonna see some some uh, bluing and, and different coloring of the steel. I've I've had broken um, friction plates in the past from from launching so hard off the line. Uh, I've had a couple shattered friction plates. So right here. You can see a hot spot right here on it. I don't know if you guys can get in here and see this. You see those hot spots? See the hot spot? Right there, that's what you're looking for. Um, you know, those are signs that you probably need to replace the clutch soon. All right, and you want to keep track of these. This is going to be a thicker um, steel plate on the, the last one. It's going to be thicker than the rest of them. So you want to keep track of them. So this is a, you can guys can see, this last plate. It's like a two, 220. This, the rest of them are 190. So the, the very last plate is the only steel that's thicker. Yeah, all my frictions are measuring the same. So that's it. Go ahead and pull all these out. Check them all out for the hot spots. You know, inspect them. You can clean them up. I've even heard of people sanding these or, or roughing these up. Yeah, uh, these steels, you know, to make them last longer because they don't want to replace the clutch yet. Um, I don't know if I recommend doing that, but, you know, whatever you want to do, it's your bike. So, alright, so you're going to go ahead and get your new clutch plates. You want to inspect your, your, uh, your basket, clutch plate basket here. Um, right in here, you're going to see some grooves from the wear, wear marks from these, uh, friction plates on here. If any of them are cutting in, you know, too crazy, you might have to replace this bath, this clutch basket. And you also want to check on this center gear for any, any excessive marks, wear marks. My all seems to be looking good. So we're going to go ahead and start putting it back together. If you have new clutches, this is where you're going to take out your new clutches and put them in. You need to soak all these friction plates in a pan full of motorcycle oil for at least an hour. I've heard of people doing it anywhere from 30 minutes to three hours, but at least one hour is what I usually shoot for. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this back together. First off is our thick friction plate. This is the 220 millimeters. And all the, re all the rest are 190. So we're gonna start off with this plate. This beveled edge goes in. Yeah, I don't know if, I mean, you guys will feel it. If you feel this, this is a sharp edge. This is more of a beveled. That goes in. And then our friction plate. And our steel, next steel plate. friction plate steel plate friction plate and they just go every other just 
like that. And then you can put this outside plate back on. All right, there's a dot. There's gonna be a dot here on this outside plate. You guys can see it. The dot right here. And there's a, there's a dot on this inside basket right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me bring you in. So right here, I mean, you can see these shallow dots all around this basket. But right here, you see one that's smaller and it's deeper. Can you guys see that? Get it. Maybe into the focus area right here. Right there. So you want to line up this dot with that dot. goes just like that and then we can install our springs like I said you want to put new springs on when you replace your clutch mine doesn't look bad enough to be replacing right now but maybe maybe next year All right, I make sure I start all these by hand uh, before I get on them with the, the impact. Okay, all your clutch spring bolts need to be torqued to 8 newton meters, which is 70.81 inch pounds or 5.9 foot pounds. And you want to tighten these in a, a cross pattern when you're torquing them. Okay, now we can put our cover back on. You can replace this seal if it's if it got messed up at all while you took it, taking it off. Then you can go ahead and replace it. I think mine still looks pretty good. So. I'm going to put it back together. You want to feed this this stem into the into this hole. You want to put the gear teeth facing the rear tire. So, facing the back of the bike that way. And once you get it in, you'll feel this this lever grabs onto the onto that stem with those gears all right and you want to line up this see this arrow here I don't know if you guys can see this you want to line up this arrow with these marks see those marks when the case cover is all the way against the case and and the you got the the gear engaged on the stem and it's pulled all the way you want it aligned to, to these marks so that's where mine is now we can start putting all of our bolts back in i always like to start all you know everything by hand because i don't want to strip anything out All right, and I'm torquing all these to 12 newton meters, or 106.21 inch pounds, or 8.85 foot pounds.
All right, so I didn't talk to you guys. I didn't really tell you what I was measuring uh, when I was measuring my friction plates, so that you know how how do how do you know when your friction plates are worn out? So that's what I'm gonna show you right here. I'm just gonna show you on a new one, just because I didn't think about it when we had it all out. I just was in my zone. So um, I go I go ahead and I zero out my scale. And you can measure it. This is 3.02 millimeters. Anything between 29 and 31 is okay, like the okay zone. So um, 2.9 millimeters to 3.1 millimeters. So that that's your okay zone. Um, if you're below 2.8 millimeters, your clutch definitely needs to be replaced. So. The brand new one is 3.03 3 .03 is what I'm getting. So, and everything I measured on mine were 2.9, or, or like in between 2.9 and 3. So, if yours are below 2.8, go ahead and replace them. All right, I know I told you guys I put a full R&D race transmission in this bike. And when I replaced it, I sent my transmission off to them to have them check out all my, my gears and everything to inspect it for any problems. On this one, you can see on every single tooth, there's red dots and they mark those dots because there's spider cracks on every single tooth of this gear. This is second gear out of my bike. And then I told you guys that I had all the dowel pins uh, undercut and hardened. These are these three pins are your dowel pins, and they sync together with your gears when you shift in and out of gears, and they get rounded over time. So if your gears aren't catching when you're shifting, or it's uh, popping out a gear when you whenever you get on the throttle, you have a problem with your transmission and these dowel pins being rounded. So when I have them undercut and hardened, they undercut this section so that they lock in together when you shift into and out of gears. And it's a lot better transmission, it's a lot stronger, and I recommend it. If you guys want to see any more videos on anything that's done on this motorcycle, please let me know. Post in the comments below. Like I said, I've done a ton of work on this motorcycle. I've had the engine completely out and completely apart. So if you want to see me do anything on this, post in the comments. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching Willow's World of DIY. Until next time.